Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And a week ago, you saw me photograph Lil. If you guys missed that video where I photographed Lil and told you how to get out of auto and into manual in a pretty simple way, click this area right about here. There's a box. You click that, it's going to take you right to that video, and then you can get back to it after the end of the video. So in that video, I talked about using auto to help you get into manual. So what you saw me do is take pictures of Lil on full auto, then review the image, which some people call chimping, when you check the back of the, of the screen, and then I would set my exposure based off of what the screen told me and, and other things like that. So some of the feedback I got were people saying, well, chimping's a bad thing. You shouldn't always look at your screen. Uh, you don't even use the meter. How do you not use the meter? Okay, I use the meter all the time, and chimping, it's okay to look at your image to learn from it. Uh, I don't recommend shooting a picture, looking, shooting a picture, looking, because you're going to end up missing what you came to shoot. But I do like to lock my exposure in, or get a base exposure, and then work around it when the light changes. So I want to tell you how to change that when you're in manual, what you're looking for. The reason... I look at the screen, I consider it like a light meter now. So we used to sit there in school back in the day when we shot film, taking light meter readings of everything. And then we would take a Polaroid. So then we would, you know, spend $2, 250 however much it was to shoot a Polaroid of the scene and then make changes to whatever lighting or exposure that we needed to. So I guess you could consider that chimping in the old days. Because some of the older photographers beyond, I mean, they had Polaroids for a long time, but maybe there were people back in the day saying, oh, we never used Polaroids when we shot. We would just get it right and, and so on. So you got to remember that as technology changes, we have to change our mentality to stay, you know, relevant or to stay, you just can't live in the old world without adapting. Because if you adapt, don't adapt, you're going to be left behind. So when I look at the screen, what am I looking at after I take a picture? I'm looking at my highlight areas. Did I blow them out? Because if I blew them out, I, I'm not going to be able to get detail back. Because if you lose all your detail, you're not going to be able to bring it back later in any kind of file, whether it's a RAW file or a JPEG. So I am looking at my exposure. If I get a base exposure, I know what to do if the sun goes behind a cloud. I'm going to bump my, I'm going to slow my shutter speed down to compensate for the light being blocked, like it's probably doing right now on my face. Uh, if the sun comes out, I'm going to speed my shutter speed back up to compensate for more light. So how am I doing this? What am I looking at? Well, inside the camera, depending on what camera you have, you have a light meter. It's like the needle that used to be in those old manual cameras. When it would get brighter or darker, the needle would move up or down. And what you would try to do is change your shutter speed and your aperture in order to compensate and get that needle right in the middle. When the needle reads in the middle for these new cameras, when it does 3D metering uh, or evaluative metering from the Canon, you're getting a, 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 basically an average from the whole scene. So it may be that a bright wall is throwing off your exposure. So if you take a picture and the wall was too bright, but other things, you know, the wall was too bright because you were exposing for the wall, what could you do? Well, you can change your shutter speed, you can change your aperture, you can play with your ISO at this point. Uh, or you could end up doing a spot metering right on, say, the subject. For instance, my face. If you were to read the computer screen, which was fully bright, uh, that would be very bright, exposed proper, properly, but my face would be dark. So what could you do? Well, you could switch in the manual. You could look at what your shutter speed was for the screen, because that's what I'm looking at, really. I'm looking at where my speeds are. Where's my shutter speed? Where's my ISO and aperture? And then to compensate for that, what would you end up doing? Well, a faster shutter speed would just make me even darker. A slower shutter speed, dialing it back down, would mean that my face would go from being le you know dark to being exposed more proper. But what's going to happen to the screen? that was bright, well, it's going to be blown out. You're going to lose detail in the screen. But for me, it's the subject that is most important that I want to get exposed properly. So in this case, it would be me, unless it was a thing about the computer. So what am I looking at? Well, once I lock in in manual to get my exposure right, based off of, well, I'll call it chimping, yeah, based off of checking everything, I'm locked in. I then know that if the light changes, I have to do something. So you just have to get used to changing 
your shutter speed, changing your aperture, and that's how manual works. I mean, once you lock in your, get your exposure close, then it's just little tweaks that go on. You don't really need the light meter at that point to tell you that the light changed because you should be able to notice that the light has changed. If it gets brighter, you have to compensate for that. You can either, you, you know you're gonna let in less light. So you're gonna either raise your f-stop from say 2.8 to f5.6, or you're gonna raise your shutter speed to compensate for the changing light that got brighter. If it gets darker, you're going to go to a slower shutter speed to let in more light. But you could also open up your lens to say 2.8 or 1.8 or 1.4 if your lens does that, or in combination you could raise your ISO. So there's a million things to do, and I'm gonna get into that in future weeks, trying to explain how shutter speed affects aperture and how aperture and shutter speed both affect ISO and how that whole triangle works. So I hope that gives you a little more information into why I'm looking at the back of the screen when I first start shooting and what I personally am looking for when I look at the screen. I'm not just making sure I got the picture right, I'm making sure my exposure is right and to see what other tweaks need to be made. So remember, once you get into manual, when the light changes, you have to make changes to your shutter speed and your aperture to compensate. So if you're just paying attention to what's going on, you're gonna have a better ability to get a better picture that's more properly exposed each time. So that is why I sometimes don't use the light meter. I use it to start, get it right, you know, get it locked in to close to where it should be in my mind, and then just play around after that, depending on what the light changes are. So, any questions, leave comments, send me emails, Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya! <laughs>